the city of Lagos points at God as our route. Be the first to know from the north, south, east, west and around Africa. We break the news. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news spreads. We are Call TV News. Welcome to Call TV. Our 24 hour news station. I guess this is the time you've been waiting for. It's called I just on call television. And um, this morning, we're talking about the state of the nation. Yes, because we've been recently, we've had impeachment saga. And today, we're concentrating on Nasarawa state, Nasarawa impeachment saga, the twists and turns. And a little background to what has been happening. The most recent is uh, the State House of Assembly asking the NJC to investigate the chief judge of the state. They're accusing of being partisan about um, the making up of the panel that um, investigated the impeachment panel that investigated the allegations against um, uh, the uh, Nasarawa state's governor and you know that the way it played itself out just after Adamawa we came to Nasarawa but actually this impeachment saga in Nasarawa is just not starting in 2014 it started way back in 2013 and we know that considering all the allegations we had about 16 allegations that were put against the governor and the CJ the chief judge was asked to constitute a panel which he did and the panel cleared the governor of all the allegations not to forget that the members of the house were not present during investigations and they were not able to present the evidences of gross misconduct alleged the governor and so being cleared now they are back to say that no the chief judge was partisan and that is why we're talking about it this morning in the studio we have two guests doing justice to this topic this morning we have Taufik Ghani is the publicity secretary of PDP Lagos State good morning good morning and we have Bola Oba a public affairs analyst it's good to have you in the studio thank you very much for the opportunity once again yeah thank you and um Given the recent happenings in the country, talking about this um, impeachment saga, it looks like when you mention State House of Assembly at the moment, it is becoming synonymous with impeachment. And what exactly should be the relationship between the executive and legislators? I'm starting with you, Mr. Gola. Okay, I thought we were going to be starting with you. I want to start with you. <laughs> with my honorable friend uh, on set. Ordinarily, our constitution dictates or specifies that the executive arm of government will be in charge of implementation of the law, the judiciary will be in charge of interpreting the law, the legislature will be in charge of making the law. I should have started with the legislature actually because they are the most, uh, in a democracy such as we practice, they are the most representative, ordinarily, should be the most representative of, of the people that constitute the polity. Now, apart from making the law, one of the other major responsibilities of a legislative assembly or a legislature in uh, a democracy such as ours, especially a presidential system of government, is that they also have the right to, they have the right of oversight. All the three principal arms of government check each other against excesses and abuse of power. But the legislature have the privilege, the legal privilege of being the agency constituted to say, you know what, the chief executive officer of the state, who is the governor, or his deputy, they have done one or two things inconsistent with the details of the law. We want to go for their jugular. We want to tell them, go home. You know what I But uh, uh, <clears throat> coming to Mr. Taufik now, at what point uh, would, can we draw a line between the legislators doing their job and trying to weigh their power, the power of majority they have against the executive? Ordinarily, we must allow uh, events to unfold 
In this particular case, we must allow the constitution, the provisions of the constitution. Before to we get to this case now, before we yes. get to Nasara, on a normal day, yes. how how can we differentiate? Where is that line between the legislatures actually carrying out their constitutional duties and just trying a weight of power? The thin line can only be interpreted by the observer because the constitution is clear the constitution must be allowed to play out the constitution is clear on the functions of the legislature in a democracy and the executive and indeed the judiciary so a situation where the legislature whether in the majority against the executive or of the same coloration with the executive the important thing is for it to be done in such a way that it brings progress development to the society and in so doing it should not be construed that they are against the executive because in any case if the constitution does not envisage that there must be a time where the legislature must rise up to put a check on the executive, then the drafters of the constitution will not have put that portion of removal of governor or president. So I just feel that because we are still a bit embryonic in the democracy, we tend to see such playing out as vendetta. However, where it is obviously vindictive, a project of vendetta, the people also have the power. In the same constitution, under section 110, the people also have the power to recall a legislator. So a member of the House of Assembly or National Assembly can be recalled. In other words, there is now a check and balance. So where they see that the representative is just going against or after the executive for no reason, they can also rise up, cook up one half of um, um, registered voter in that constituency, send to INEC, INEC within 90 days con con um, conducts referendum, and then just simple majority, the man is recalled. So I think the thin line is actually an interpretation of how that thought force, the observer, sees it. Let's go to Adamawa first. I know our point of destination is Nasarawa. But in the case of um, Inyako, we had that the same house that impeached Inyako at some point last year gave him a vote of confidence. There were allegations before then, but towards the end of last year, we had vote of confidence being placed on the same governor and we saw that just months after the same house that gave him vote of confidence as impeached him what happened between the short period of time because i greeted you good morning does not mean that in the afternoon we cannot fight because i said good morning to you in the morning it does not mean that in the afternoon we cannot fight you know sometimes most of these vote of no confidence or whatever they are they are theatrical to be honest with you sometimes very very melodramatic in the nature of the way. Indeed, you as a political observer, and I'm talking as you know, a studied political observer, you should be getting quizzical when a legislative arm in a polity is passing a vote of no confidence in an executive officer. You know why I said you should be getting quizzical? The only reason why the arms would have to put up that pantomime drama or babasalai drama is because something is going on beneath beneath uh, the, the, the carpet. Usually, if you are a comfortable, balanced, well-established chief executive officer, and you are your hands are well on the man on the mantle of power in your state, the the drama of vote of no confidence or whatever does not really come to play. We knew all along that from the moment Nyako ported to the PD, uh, to the APC, he believed he carried 
the majority members of the House of Assembly in a state with him. Some ostensibly did the ritual of following him, but the truth was that the power play in that in that polity in that state was such that he knew he was working on on uh, on a, a shifting a shifting ground, so that he got eventually consumed by by the this thing should not be news to him, and he, and he could see it coming. He, he was really prepared for it the way he handled it. Immediately it happened, he was in, he was in Paris, sitting on the street of Paris. Four wives, the Abuja one was in Abuja. The, uh, you are making fun so, of So it was let, about let, his defection? Let me, let, me just, let me just add that it, it is not uh, a reflection of him deporting. I mean, I mean, defecting to APC. As a matter of fact, talking about the vote of confidence that was allegedly passed, Allegedly, we, allegedly passed. We must look, ostensibly passed. Look at look at the period the said vote of confidence was passed, and the period that an issue of diversion of fund of about I think twenty something billion was discovered, and you know the constitution is also very ambiguous on what gross misconduct is. As defined under Section 11, which is the sub of Section 188, talking on or about the removal of a governor, misconduct has been defined as that something that is obviously gross misconduct, a violation of the Constitution, or what the House of Assembly perceives. Fantastic. That's the definition of as gross misconduct. In the case of Inyaku, the peculiar case of Inyaku, we must put in proper context. I will tell you that even if I were not a member of any political party, Inyako ought to have been impeached for long. Yes. Not only for diversion of funds, the way and manner he went about playing his politics within the Adama state. I tell you, during a Federal Executive Council meeting, because he had left PDP to APC, and a governor, a PDP governor, Goswil Akpabi of Akwai Bomb State, wanted to extend and handshake, actually extended and handshake to um, Iyako. Iyako. Iyako threw caution into the wind, all decorum, in the middle of meeting of Federal Executive Council, and he said, you, have you been sent to come and poison me? Do you want to kill me? State it was shown. State Council. The Council of State. It was shown. You understand? Thereby putting that state into serious disrepute, embarrassing the state. Number two, Governor Yako, because of the animosity, the hatred he has for the president, eh, went and wrote a letter and released that letter to the press, not writing the letter that is even the issue. But releasing such letter to a press, a military man who has military background, alleging that if the president, sitting president, is sponsoring um, 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 uh, insurgency, uh, not insurgency, is sponsoring um, mass murder, of, um, genocide. genocide, genocide. Sorry, sponsoring genocide against a particular tribe. That is enough to break the country. It is, it is incitement. It is, by my own thinking, it is a gross violation. It is a gross violation of the Constitution because he is a governor and then he is a gross misconduct. So he ought to have been impeached long. But you see, they just get the visionary. I think that whenever this issue of we want to impeach a governor comes up, Electorates must allow it to play out. The constitution guarantees a governor to be represented whenever that seven man panel is set up by the CJ. He can be represented, defended, like what we have seen now. But for the snag in the composition of the seven man panel, Amakura has been cleared. In other words, going by the provisions of 
the constitution on the removal of the governor once that seven man panel does not find any iota of good evidence in the allegation that's in the past that is the end you understand but the problem in this now is that if you remember very well the house of assembly even refused to show up to give evidence because they fundamentally raised the issue of the composition being biased so at that point in time the cj ought to have reconsidered the composition and it is clear in composing the seven man panel the constitution tells you they must not be political card carrying members of any political party they must not be public servants they must be people of proven integrity this is where i disagree with him you know why i disagree with him politicians are very very uh one must be very careful when you are directly relating with them. You must remember now that he has given a portraiture that is very consistent with his own PDP identity, which is partisan identity. But the first person to actually vilify the person of the chief judge was Amakura. Because Amakura initially thought he had an injunction that should not make the chief judge constitute the seven-man panel. You remember? It was in the news. So, at the point when the chief judge rescinded what happened, he constituted the seven-man panel, and the blame game moved to the other side. The other side started, you know, finger-pointing because maybe they felt the members of the panel were going to be impartial or were going to be, were not quite predisposed to whatever they wanted to achieve. They refused to come. Look at the person of this chief judge now in the old pantomime that, that played out in Adamawa. Initially, the APC side felt he was a traitor that he betrayed them by rescinding the initial order, the initial judicial order that he gave, to now say that in view of the recommendation of the legislature, he was duty bound to constitute the panel. They thought they were shouting blue mother that it was probably getting partisan in the direction of the members of the of the house. When they constituted the panel, the house also saw how sometimes when you are dealing with politicians, they will always cry wolf even when there is none. You must just make sure that like Caesar's wife, you stand above. It's getting quite interesting on Core Digest this morning, and we are talking about Nasara impeachment saga, the twists and turn, and it's so good to have a mixture of Bolao a public affairs analyst, and Taufik Ghani, publicity secretary of the PDP arm of Lagos State. We'll take a break to bring you the news on the hour, after which we'll continue with the same topic and the same set of guests. Thank you for being there. Glad to have you join us another edition of The Political Arena, the most detailed and incisive political show. If you are a sitting governor and the opposition is able to stomach structure against you, that means you are wicked to the people. So to the end of our time, I'll be the legitimate authority to govern this country. Give me 20 minutes to move or they will shoot me. He has no chance for survival. If he likes himself, this is the best time to get out before it very The PDP is a ruling party has failed. To so anybody who thinks that government will fold his hands and allow miscreants to take over the streets of our own state and cause havoc, is deceiving himself. The good, bad, ugly, and beautiful sides of the Nigerian political system. Join me every Sunday at 9:15 p.m. on 40 News.